Hey everyone, I'm glad to have you all back in my kitchen tonight. I hope that you were able to watch the video on the spaghetti and um, followed along with that and had a good success with your spaghetti. Maybe you had that for dinner. Uh, maybe you're gonna save it for tomorrow, I don't know. But tonight, we're gonna be making pancakes. Now, when we come up with these recipes for this class, we wanted to you know, do things that were really simple. And so this might be just actually too simple for some of you, uh, but I'm gonna give you some tips on how to make it, how to make the pancake mix a little bit better. Um, and we're not gonna be doing that tonight. I'm not going to actually be adding the things to the pancake mix uh, because I want you to see that just plain pancake mix from the box is not bad. It's not a bad thing at all. You can add things to it to bring the flavor up some, but you can totally eat the pancake mix made with water straight from the box. I mean, well, don't eat it straight from the box. You <laughs> want to cook it first, <laughs> but you see what I'm saying. You don't have to add anything to it. Um, but as with all things, you can add and make things a little better if you want to. Now the recipes, the reason we stuck with simple is because a lot of you all are going to be going off to college and you're gonna be living in dorm rooms. And um, now I know from my experience in college, we had a shared kitchen, uh, but you know, you didn't always have access to, you know, pots and pans, lots of ingredients. Uh, so, and you may not even have access to a kitchen. You might have just a little warmer plate in your room, a microwave, or, you know, maybe like just one little element of burner or something to cook on. So we want to keep things really simple and teach you all how you can eat uh, and not, you know, break the bank trying to keep yourself alive while you're going through college. All right, so I have Hungry Jack pancake mix. This is my favorite kind. Uh, there may be better kinds out there. I know the Crusto, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's pretty good, um, and I've bought that before too. I just really like this one. Um, it, you know, it's called extra light and fluffy and they really do turn out to be pretty, pretty fluffy pancakes. So I really like that one. Uh, your syrup can be anything you want. I mean, you all are all teenagers and I'm sure you, you know, you've experienced a lot of different syrups by this age. So you kind of know what you like and what you don't like. Um, I'll be using a sugar-free maple syrup. Um, just because uh, I need to use a sugar-free maple syrup. And um, it's uh, it, this one actually doesn't taste very bad at all. I like this one. Uh, one of my favorites is Mrs. Butters Butterworth. And that's one of my favorites, and I really like Aunt Jemima, but they're taking Aunt Jemima off the market, which I'm very sad about. So, but this one's very good, and Log Cabin has a really good syrup as well. My, one of my sons, let's see if I can find that, what he likes. He likes to use plain Cairo table syrup. That is his favorite thing to use on pancakes. Uh, so you might like that as well. All right. So all we are going to do is, I'm just going to go ahead and turn my skillet on. I've got uh, a hair here that's bothering me. And I'm just going to turn that down to about six, about a medium heat. Um, then I'm not going to use all this because it's just me and my husband up tonight. All the kids are in the bed. And uh, I really don't think we are going to need this whole box of pancake meat. So I'm just going to open it up. And... Um, I don't know. I'm just going to put a little bit out. I'm not even going to measure. If you guys want to measure, listen, there is a chart, I think, on here. Yes, yeah, so six to eight pancakes. You have one cup of milk, uh, three-fourths cup of water, and then if you want 12 to 16 pancakes, you go two cups mix, uh, and then you have one and a half cups of water. Oh, that wasn't milk, that was mixed, sorry. I can't see, I don't have my glasses on. But you can see. So, 
And then that's one of the things you can sus substitute. If you don't want to use water, you can definitely use milk. So we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. But I'm just gonna use water because when I'm in a hurry, that's what I use is water. And we're trying to keep this cheap and you probably are not gonna have access to a whole lot of milk when you're in a dorm room, unless you make that a priority. All right, so I've got just a little bit here. It's not, I don't know, that's probably like a cup and a half, maybe, maybe two cups, but not quite, I don't think, okay? And the reason I didn't measure is because I want, want y'all to see how, um, I mix mine up. I just like go by sight. So we're gonna come over here to the sink and I'm just gonna turn my water on. And guys, I know this is not a scientific, methodical way of creating pancakes, but this is Cindy's way of doing it and it always works. So I just put it under there. I get a little water, stir it. And I already tell that's not gonna be enough. A little more. I'll stir as I go. That might be enough. Yep, I believe that's going to do it right there. And if I get it too thin, I'll just go back and add a little bit more mix. So but that is, that's not bad. Now I don't want to stir this a lot, okay? I just want, I want to get those biggest lumps out of there so I might squish them up to the side there like that. Um, usually I'm fixing so much more pancake mix than this. So this is a little thin for me. I am going to add a little bit more mix in there. So I'll just come back over here. Add me a little bit. Now you don't want to mix it too much like I said a while ago because this has a gluten factor in it and you get that gluten going and then uh, gluten is often used you want the gluten to come out when you want something chewy and you don't really want chewy pancakes so let's try to stay away from that and uh, anytime you over stir something like this it'll get a little tough you don't you just want this barely stirred and the more you stir it too the more your air bubbles will deflate and you don't want that because you have uh, baking soda in here and it's creating like little air bubbles. You can see like the little air bubbles in there. I can go through and pop them. I don't really want to though because um, that's gonna make my pancakes light and fluffy. So that's about the consistency I want. You see it's thick and globby like that. That's a pretty good consistency for pancake mix. You don't want it just to run off your spoon. You want it to have leave a nice thick coating on your spoon, but to also not just stick to it like bread dough, okay? So I'm gonna come over here. That's already getting pretty hot. Um, you all probably already know this, but just another little tip. You can always put your hand right here and tell if your skillet is pretty hot because if I can hold my hand here for like five seconds, my skillet's not real hot. Um, so it needs to get a little hotter. I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit. I have this burner <laughs> that this is on right now. Um, I'm not going to use the cuss word, but I'm going to say, I'll tell you what I call it. It's the burner from Hades. And this thing will just like, oh my gosh, it just gets so hot really, really quick. And sometimes it wants to psych me out and like I'll try to be really good and keep it down on medium heat and it takes forever for it to heat up. And then all of a sudden it's like uh, an inferno. So now I can already feel it's getting, it's getting pretty hot now. I feel that, that temperature coming up. All I'm gonna do uh, is get my butter spray for one thing. There's some right there. Better get this one out, it's almost empty. Okay. Shake your butter spray good. I have to get on my boys all the time for not shaking the butter spray. They gotta shake it and spray the pan. Okay, all right. Now, <coughs> this is a, excuse me, this is a newer skillet. Uh, and it is Cafflon, so it's non-stick. I probably wouldn't even have to use any spray, but I'm just so used to it. I just go ahead and spray it anyway. I bet on the rest of them, though, I probably wouldn't even have to use any spray. So, 
that's good and hot and you want it to be hot your your surface needs to be hot okay now you can measure these out uh, with like a fourth a cup measure if you want to do that again I just like plop them out there and we like ours little we like the little ones you can make a great big one if you want to I, just, I like to do that way every now and then just make a great big old pancake but for the most part we like the little ones because we like the edges you got more edges when they're little all right now you're just going to let that set there be patient and you will see it'll start to form bubbles you can see some bubbles popping right now keep hitting that and you want it to form several bubbles like you can see them coming up around the edge here um, and you just kind of wait it out you don't want to wait too long because you don't want to burn them on the bottom but I think these are going to be these are be fine they're not ready to turn yet and the thing of it is is when you're cooking pancakes you're doing most of your cooking on this side you're gonna uh, you know flip them over but you won't have to leave them very long on that other side because it's going to be that heat's going to just transfer right on up through here and basically all you're going to do is be cooking the outside a little bit when you flip it over now let's talk about while this these are cooking let's talk about uh, uh, things that we could have done differently about adding them in there see that is not quite quite enough so I'll go ahead and leave it flipped though because I already flipped it um, we could have sifted our flour that would have made it lighter or mix uh, by using a sifter my husband seems to think that I don't know where our sifter is and he didn't even know we had one but he's not always in the kitchen with me uh, we do have a sifter and actually pretty sure I hope I'm right I can show him right where it's at. I have two sifters, but if I, I can okay. get them out, I have a little sifter and a big sifter, okay. okay? So that's just like a one cup sifter. This one here, I don't know, it's like three cups, I think. Um, and this isn't really something that you wanna wash a lot because it will rust. Now let's go back over here real quick. Now you see how that is looking now. It's it's puffed up. It's got bubbles, a lot of bubbles. So we're gonna go ahead and flip that. You see that's nice and golden colored. Flip that one. And you can even see this one. The bubbles have already popped and that's already done on that side right there, on that little edge there. Okay. And this is probably already done. So we flipped her early like that up and those will take just a minute here okay so another thing we could have done we could have added vanilla or almond flavor to our pancakes that's good um, vanilla vanilla is good in just about anything sweet um, almond I mean you know it depends on if that's what you like or not um, I like almond I don't think I've ever put it in my pancakes but you could, um, you could even put banana flavoring in there if you wanted to, all right? So, now another way we could have made them better is we could have added an egg. I would have added about an egg to what I had here. It'd be about an egg per cup. And um, let that heat back up for just a minute. Um, so, you know, you could do that different ways. You could do the egg, just put the egg, the yolk, and everything in there. Or you could just do the whites. And, like, if I was just doing whites, I would have probably used two whites um, for probably one white per cup. Or maybe even two. But whip them up really good because your whites get really airy. And then uh, that's how you make, you can make meringue out of uh, egg whites. And you can make... Uh, like whipped cream, or not whipped cream, uh, whipped topping out of egg whites. And just fold it, By the, you would do that, you just fold those egg whites into your batter. Uh, and it would make it really light and fluffy. That's how a lot of uh, 
people do low carb pancakes, they'll do the egg whites and whip them up really good and then fold it into the batter to make the pancakes rise a little more because almond flour does not rise very well. All right, we got four more there. I'm trying to think of other ways that you could have made those a little better. Oh, buttermilk. We could have used buttermilk instead uh, of whole milk. Well, you can use like low milk too, like low fat milk, but most people, you know, most people around here that I've seen drink whole milk. Uh, my family thinks they have to have whole milk. I like 2% milk, I'm fine with that. And I actually keep low fat milk for me, uh, which is, if you're drinking it, it's not near as good as whole milk or 2%. It's really watered down. But cooking and stuff, it works fine. Um, so what you would do to create, uh, oh, if you didn't have buttermilk, because a lot of people don't like buttermilk, but it's really good to cook with, and it's really good to cook pancakes with because the acidity in it, uh, what that does is it reacts with the baking soda that's in the pancake mix and creates more bubbles, kind of creates like a little air explosion in there and it makes it really fluffy. So, you you know, You've heard of buttermilk pancakes. Well, that's why they put the buttermilk in there. Make them fluffier. All right, these are all ready to turn. See, they're done around the edges. That's, that's what you're looking at, really, is how well done around the edges and how formed it is. Kind of looks, whoop, I messed that one up. That's all right. Let's put that baby back over there. That'd be yours, old. <laughs> And flip that thing. No, I'll eat it. I'm just joking. Um, so, to make buttermilk, I was going to show you all how. And make sure I don't burn my pancakes there. I'm going to go ahead and put this up or I'm going to knock it over. before I make that buttermilk because I don't want them to burn. Like I said, once you flip them babies, it don't take no time on that second side. That bottom one there is just cranky. You don't want to be fixed. And I have just a little bit here left. Maybe enough for, I ain't even gonna put no spray in there this time. Let's just make one big one. You can have that one, babe. I'll show them how to make a decent size one. Like I said, we like those little ones. Call them, some people make them a lot smaller and call them, what, silver dollar pancakes? Now, another thing you want to do with your pancake mix, this is just a little tip. Especially if you're the one washing dishes, you want to go ahead and rinse this stuff out because it firms up on your in your bowl and becomes quite hard to get off. Um, so I just like to go ahead and rinse mine out. All I'm doing is just rinsing the worst of it out. I'm not trying to wash it with my hands, so don't be concerned. And I did wash my hands before we started tonight. I just didn't get that on video. All right, so that's cooking up good. So what I'm gonna do to make some buttermilk instead, and like I was saying, a lot of people don't keep buttermilk on hand because they don't like the taste of it, but it's really good to cook with. And if you find yourself, you have a recipe and you need buttermilk, here's a quick way to do it. So you just take like, um, you can use low fat milk or whole milk just get you a cup of milk and when you measure I learned this in science class thanks to Steve Cheatham when you measure something you need to don't don't raise it up and look at it that way put it on a flat surface especially if you need to be exact and get down eye level with it and make sure that it's right on that line if it needs to be precise if it's just for something like this, it doesn't have to be. Okay, now, I had a cup out to put that in, but I can just do that in here. 
I'm gonna use, I don't know if that thing comes off or not. I'm gonna use this lemon juice. First, we're gonna flip this pancake over. See how many bubbles that thing's got in it? Now that's a really good example to show you when that's ready to be flipped. How that's dry around the edges. It's got all those bubbles on it. See, that's, that's still good and brown. It's not too brown. And I need a tablespoon. I'm going to put a tablespoon of lemon juice. And try to. It's like milking a cow. I'm milking a lemon. And what this is going to do is it's going to react with this milk and it's going to curdle the milk a little bit. Now, it's not going to affect the milk in the recipe, okay? So don't worry, like you're going to have little curdles in there. And I'm just going to put that in there, stir that up. And that'll take about five to ten minutes to uh, set up. I'm going to go ahead and get that pancake out, turn my stove off. The pancakes are done and uh, I wish I did that sooner so I could show you all but I promise you in about five to ten minutes that's going to thicken up and not real thick it won't be just like buttermilk but it will be thick and it will have a little curdle to it and it will not affect that your pancakes are not going to taste like lemon I promise you um, whatever scientific reason is um, the taste of the citric acid kind of goes away. I don't know if that's part of the bubble explosion or what, but it kind of goes away and you don't taste that real sourness and bitterness um, that you usually do with buttermilk or with lemon juice or with vinegar. You can also use white vinegar instead of that. Another way to make it is if you have yogurt, um, just plain yogurt, you take plain Non-fat yogurt. I guess it could have fat in it if you wanted to because buttermilk's got fat in it. Uh, I just always keep the non-fat. And you take like uh, three-fourths a cup of yogurt and water that down with a fourth a cup of water. And that will work as buttermilk substitute as well. So um, that's about all the tips and tricks I have for you. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can definitely email me or text me and I'll be happy to answer. Um, and still, if, if you haven't did the spaghetti recipe yet and you're going to do it later on in the week, you can just shoot me a question whenever you do that. All right? Hope you all enjoy.